and welcome back. And today for World Art Day, I'm here with Barbara. Ky uh, let me get this right. Kyra, Carrie, Carrie, oh, Carrie, oh. Everybody and, has trouble with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so simple, but it's okay. Right. Um, and Barbara is with the Long Island Craft Guild. Um, it's a an independent, a nonprofit educational organization. And Barbara, give us a little bit of a background of exactly what the Craft Guild is. Um, the graph, it started in 1959, it was incorporated by a group of people that were very interested in promoting craft, fine craft. Um, so it wasn't just people who were knitting sweaters from instructions or, I know, um, it's people who use craft material but in a very creative way. So they're all artists. and. Um, so in 1959 they started and uh, they had a very strong connection to the American Craft Council and so we do follow the guidelines in terms of materials that they consider craft, quote, craft materials <laughs> even though it expands um, and includes all kinds of things that didn't exist then. <laughs> and um, uh, we had a connection with Hofstra at that time. So when I moved to Long Island uh, in uh, the s early 70s, um, I was out of graduate school and at Pratt, for, and I was there for a long time, and I had a new baby and no job, and my husband's business was here, so we moved here. I had nobody and nothing. And uh, when I started working at Suffolk Community College, um, one of the adjuncts said, I was probably complaining, and he said, you know, you should look into the Long Island Craft Guild, because I was working in clay. And um, I went to a meeting at Hofstra. There were enormous number of people there. I met this wonderful woman, uh, Alice Brinson, and uh, she just introduced me to everybody. Uh, we actually had a home at Hofstra at that time. We had a um, weaving studio, a glass blowing studio, pottery, and a lot of equipment that we got grants for. So when I joined, it was very different than what it is now. Eventually, Hofstra took over that room, and so we've been meeting at libraries um, and other kinds of uh, places like libraries for many, many, many years. Um, so I got very involved. I, I became an education chair along with a woman called Elita Kelmanson. And then I became a exhibits chair, then I became president for about five years. <laughs> and right now I edit the newsletter and I, um, I uh, deal with the media groups. So the guild is set up with by media group. Okay. So we have clay, fiber, glass, paper, uh, metals, and mixed media, and wood. And wood. <laughs> and wood. So uh, we just celebrated our 60th anniversary. Oh, congratulations. And, yes, it was wonderful. A beautiful, beautiful exhibit at the Art League of Long Island, okay. which is a great space. And um, it just came down on Sunday, so we just missed that. <laughs> oh, shucks. <laughs> oh, shucks. <laughs> so, um, uh, Alice, Alice uh, did this necklace, and she works with um, and what exactly? found material. This one is made all from mahjong parts. Oh, wow. Mahjong tiles and dominoes oh, yeah, and I things see like the, that. The domino and silver. Here. Yeah, you see the mahjong yeah. thing here, and I think this one too. And of course, the domino. And then she did the beaded um, cord. And uh, I have a funny connection with her because it turned out her mother was my uh, art supervisor when I was uh, teaching in an elementary school in Queens. And we never knew it because her <laughs> name was different from our mother's name. Anyway, so um, I joined the guild in about 1975, I think, mm -hmm. and I've been in it ever since. It's and been I've always been active, and it's just it's community. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it really, you know, basically saved my life, I think, because I think I was going to move away if I didn't have some kind of connection to Long Island. So in those days, it was called the Long Island Craftsmen's Guild. Okay. And I think it was in the late 90s or early 2000 that we changed it officially to the Crafts Guild because... And yeah, is there a reason on why? Or? Well, because most of the members were women. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, people were beginning to kind of get sensitive to yeah. you know, the terminology. And so uh, that was when it changed. And uh, we've just been active and we always have exhibits, we mm -hmm. have workshops, we have meetings, everybody's open. It's open for everybody. Um, 
Some people just come and listen to the lectures at the library when we have a meeting. Mm -hmm. They don't even do anything, you know, in terms of craft. And some people are really turned on by it. Yeah. I mean, I know I never use clay or anything. I mean, can you tell me a little bit about like how, I mean, you mentioned clay. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about how you kind of work that? I mean, it looks pretty messy from what I see, so I'm not. Well, you have to not be afraid of getting dirty or, <laughs> or breaking. You know, my students, I teach ceramics at uh, Suffolk Community now, and uh, you know, they come in with their long fake the nails. Long nails. <laughs> and I, I said, Get, get used to not having them on. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you have to not be afraid of being dirty. Getting That's dirty. All. Um, I was a fashion student, and I took an elective cl ceramics class, and that was the end of fashion. <laughs> and I became a fine arts major. I was yeah. painting, and then I really wanted to do clay. So when I moved out here, I bought, we bought this you know old house with a barn, and I have a great studio, <laughs> and that was it. So I have a really nice clay studio. Um, some people don't even have a space, and they find you know they'll work with somebody else in the guild, right. which is very nice. It's just a very supportive organization. Um, clay is wonderful because, as I tell my students, you can do anything. It could be anything. Clay could be anything. be anything. Anything that you can picture. Anything you can picture. Anything that just is formed by the touch of your fingers. I right. mean, that's what makes crafts so special. Mm -hmm. It's the human touch. Right. Even though 3D printing is going to be making everything. <laughs> that not, not yet. Not yeah, yet. Not yet. But they are making things out of clay, so I'm, I'm getting like kind of nervous. But it's the human touch that makes the difference. Um, and speaking of human touch, um, we actually have here um, an artist, and, and you can tell me a little bit about this artist and, and this piece right here. Um, this is by Linda Reddick. Um, she's a wonderful beater. She and she creates everything, all those patterns, the terry cloth robe, everything is beads except the wooden figure underneath. And um, she does this beautiful, beauti technically beautiful and emotionally beautiful work um, by using the bead. And um, it's meticulous. These beads are teeny tiny. Um, and just to show you what the influence of the guild could be is um, our September meeting is always um, members demonstrating and the public is invited and of course members come and uh, Linda was demonstrating and she I sat down I said oh that looks like fun I mean <laughs> I've been in the guild for like 30 years already and uh, I just got hooked on beading so I'm making beading e I'm making earrings and rings I mean it's like my inside thing when yeah. I'm not messy with clay this is very meticulous and perfect so um, it, here I am a member and I can learn something new yeah. and get involved I, you if you're in the clay group you can go to the fiber group. you could doesn't matter you mm -hmm. can it's so integrated it's open open integrated yeah. and it's just a wonderful opportunity for people and you said you've been doing beads are your earrings my, beaded? Yes, or? my earrings are beaded. <laughs> <laughs> and my ring is beaded. Oh, there's this one right here? It's, yeah. very, it's, yeah. very, it's very articulate and very detailed. Uh -huh. how, long, how long does it take? Oh, gosh. I'm always watching television. It's <laughs> <laughs> I can't watch foreign films, however, because I have to be looking at the beads. Um, you know, a few hours. Okay. That. Uh, hers take months and months right. to do. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to this piece, is a, it looks very blue ocean. I mean, I don't know exactly. Is that? Um, th this is all these works that I'm showing today are from the show, our anniversary show, which was called Echoes. So okay. everybody uh, interpreted Echoes the way they wanted to. Okay. And this is by Juliana Kirk. And I think you can see the echo in the form. It's an ecological piece, but. Um, in terms of its visual quality, you can see how the form echoes each other and the mm -hmm. colors echo each other. And it's, it's about this, each piece is about that big. And it just was a beautiful piece um, uh, visually. And do you have people, when it comes to coming in as a member, are they newbies? Are they um, artists who've been doing this for years? I mean, both. do you? Both. Both. That's, and, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Some people. I try to encourage my students to come. Um, mm -hmm. Most of them that do are, you know, very passionate about loving something. Of course, my area is clay, so of course they're right. clay artists. But, <laughs> but they can go anywhere they want. And so sometimes, as I was with beading, I was mm -hmm. new, right? Even though I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Um, this is my piece. It's life size. Um, it's called Victoria Has a Secret. Um, and uh, you can see the hands. Uh, I wanted it to form like her undergarments, her bra and panties. So if you could have gone down, you could see that. <laughs> and um, it's echoing, uh, for me, it was echoing the, the op uh, objectification of women throughout okay. the history of art. And, that, um, th that's based on the hands? Yes, okay. yes. And of course, what's going on now with Me Too and all right. of that. Right, right. Um, and so, you know, uh, you can interpret it the way you want, but... Uh, and I think that's the great it. part about when it comes to art. You can interpret it however you want. Right. In regards to, you know, whether it's clay, whether it's beads, anything mm -hmm. related. Um, and I know you have a few things here that you'd like to show. Um, well, um, our paper group is getting very active. Um, I have some cards that were made by Nancy Yoshi, and she's a wonderful collage artist. And um, then she, uh, you know, because some of us have to earn money, she uh, came up with cards, and they're all um, hand done and hand embellished. And of course, there are hundreds and hundreds of them that she has. <laughs> but I had these two at home that uh, you can see. Um, and uh, we also ha had a, we've always had a wood group. Um, uh, I don't see the piece up there, but um, we have a new member, Seth Ehrlich. Okay. And he's he had a wonderful show of about 50 boxes that he made. That Here's one. Right here? This was in the Echoes show. Okay. Um, um, and uh, he, he showed three of them in, in this show, and they're beautifully worked. I mean, the craftsmanship is gorgeous, and they're, some of them are amusing, and some of them are serious, and they all function. And, <laughs> uh, so we have our, you know, our one woodworker now <laughs> back, so we're hoping to get that, uh, that group more active right now. And how can people get involved with um, the Craft Guild? How do they get involved? Can right. they go on a uh, website? Yes. Is, can they speak to you? They can speak to me. <laughs> they can go on the website and they can call. So if you go on the website, it's L-I-C-G, Long Island Craft Guild, dot org. And if you uh, go on the website, you'll see, you know, the contact number for calling uh, for information. Okay. And um, lastly, when it comes to your pieces, do you have any inspiration when it comes to the pieces? My inspirations, personally? Mm -hmm. right. I think that I draw from my own experiences. Okay. And of course now, it's, everything is so political, and you can't avoid it, and I'm getting angrier and angrier, and so is my work. Well, we'll leave that to the <laughs> side. <laughs> um, I wanted to point out this one thing. Yeah. Uh, this is a scarf by Sally Shore, and this is a new technique that's been coming out that people are using, and you actually take the, uh, the leaves, and you treat them chemically, and you can print them on the silk. So this is all silk, oh, it's all handmade and hand designed and... It, it feels very silky. Yeah, it's <laughs> And, um, you know, several, uh, we have a very strong fiber group now too as well. That's so we, people, when we say fiber, it could be knitting, it could be dyeing, it could be mm -hmm. collaging, it could be many things. So you have a, a tremendous amount of different workshops, mm -hmm. different ways that you can get involved yes. and whatnot. Um, and as you can see, there's so many different mm -hmm. ways that you can create, which mm -hmm. is um, which is great. And I feel like I want to come and take a clay class. <laughs> like now, I want to get dirty <laughs> and take it from you, Barbara. <laughs> but um, I want to thank you for coming You're out welcome. on World Art Day. Um, it's been a pleasure having you, thank and you. thank you for showing the works of art and in all your pieces. So thank you great very much. It. It's very enjoyable. <laughs> so. Um, we want to thank Barbara uh, to, for being here on World Art Day and we want to thank you for taking the time to looking at her photos and listening to her story.